गुड इवनिंग नमस्ते नमस्कार सबके लिए यू नो ऑल द पीपल हु हैव गैदर्ड हियर फॉर दिस वेरी वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग वेबिनार ऑन अ वेरी न्यू टॉपिक एंड न्यू न्यू सब्जेक्ट सो थैंक यू सो मच फॉर बीइंग हियर एंड स्पेंडिंग योर प्रेशियस टाइम हियर सो लेट्स गेट स्ट्रेट टू दब्जेक्ट ऑफ द वेबिनार टूडे यू नो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग सब्जेक्ट विच इज the blue zone and uh, the epigenetics what's the correlation between uh, these two uh, you know topics so uh, i hope I'm, uh, uh, i'm i'm sure you know the the screen is visible uh, just give me a thumbs up uh, if it's visible yeah okay great so so you know we are going to talk about epigenetics epigenetics ka matlab kya hai and what is blue zone and what's a blue zone diet so the text box uh, the comment box is on so you can put your comments and questions if you have to uh, during the uh, webinar so uh, good morning to some people who have logged in all the way from usa uh, different parts of usa thank you so much for uh, joining in and uh, you know people who matter are here so let's get uh, started so now let me ask you very stupid regular questions that you all have been answering all this while ki aapko bahut bar pucha rahega so answer this question in the chat box if you can how many if you want to live healthier so when i say healthier so you may be living healthy already but then yes i want you to live healthier than what you are living right now so you can just uh, you know just type me uh, if you want to live healthier or maybe you know you want me to assume that yes uh, you know everybody wants to live healthier okay so the first question is uh, yeah healthier living yes okay all right the second you know the very regular you know stupid question that people always ask is do you want to live happier you may be already living happy but then you want to live more happy you know happier than what you are right now so uh, you can again type and then answer yes okay you want to do that as well but the third question that i want to ask you is and i'm sure i have asked this many times and i've got some weird answers is that do you want how many if you want to live longer so when we talk about longer it's you know obviously living a uh, uh, longer you know more number of years so uh, you know whenever i ask this question khas karke healthier happier ke liye log aaram se jawab de dete hain but then when you ask saying that do you want to live longer people have a you know kind of a weird uh, expression on their face and uh, if anybody asking this question to them it uh, gives an impression saying that you know this guy is you know up to some something fraudulent or something that he cannot deliver because people doubt that you know living longer is not very easy a lot of people tell us ki already there is a lot of stress uh, there is a lot of tension uh, you know we are there, there's so much of uh, happening in our life uh, all all around the clock so we say that we want to live healthy happy is fine but not longer ek bar चले जाएंगे तो आराम हो जाएगा पीपल एक्चुअली हैंग you know if you are wanting to live longer this webinar definitely is for you and i want you to pay very very close attention because i'm not here with a motivational uh, you know webinar it's very informative based on the facts and science that is uh, you know going to be very beneficial to us so jab hum log longer ki baat karte hain when we are talking about longer uh, you know we are talking basically about life expectancy life span ki what is the life span of uh, all of us all all of us human beings so this also leads to another very very hot topic today that we are discussing is something called longevity so you know human longevity has been uh, uh, you know uh, has been a subject of a lot of uh, you know scientific research and bahut sari cheeze isme ho rahi hai and then you know the video that i played in the beginning is of dr david uh, sinclair david sinclair is uh, from the uh, you know harvard university from usa and then you know it's it's a research university which talks and uh, does research on the longevity of human beings and he himself has been trying a lot of things and then which he's been uh, uh, talking about uh, his book is very famous i'll come to that a little while so longevity is a subject that people are talking about but they are not very sure 
कि किस तरीके से लॉन्जिविटी को बढ़ाए यू नो हाउ वी एक्सपैंड आर लाइफ स्पैन वेन वी वे स्टडिंग वेन वी वे स्टूडेंट इन आवर प्राइमरी स्कूल एंड हाई स्कूल वगैरह आई थिंक यू नो वी वी ऑल हैड दिस कैन ऑफ जनरल नॉलेज क्वेश्चन की बाई ए स्पीसीज का या इस पर्टिकुलर एनिमल का लाइफ स्पैन क्या है सो वी हैव स्टडीड ऑल दैट द लॉन्गेस्ट यू नो लिविंग स्पीसीज यू नो कुड बी वाइल्ड टॉटाइज एक्सेट्रा सो लाइफ लाइफ स्पैन ऑफ एनिमल्स हैज बीन अ मैटर ऑफ यू नो स्टडी रिसर्च एंड देन वी ऑल अंडरस्टैंड दैट बट यू नो वी आर नो गुड टूडे टॉक अबाउट द लाइफ स्पैन ऑफ ह्यूमन बींग्स सो दैट इज वाई दिस बुक रिटन बाई डेविड सिंक्लेर is why we age now in the video if you have paid a little attention he says aging is nothing uh, you know need not be considered as natural uh, you know ki mai samay hu samay kisi ke liye rukta nahi hai to you get old and then you know one one fine day inevitably there is a death but that's something that he is challenging and then he is saying aging is like a disease now if you are able to treat a disease he is saying that you know even aging can be treated so that's the reason he is saying that you know it's not about anti aging but it's about uh, you know longevity so that's the term that is using so if you really look at life expectancy or longevity across the world of uh, different uh, human beings or people citizens of various countries you will see in the chart here you know pakistan is like 67 but then india is next with 70 70 years so now of course there is uh, some regional uh, uh, you know uh, distribution of age factor also is there people in different states in india have different life expectancy uh, people will uh, also have you know i'm i'm talking about gender neutrality because uh, women comparatively uh, live uh, longer than men of course but you know on an average at the national level it is 70 years life expectancy if i'm an indian citizen and living here uh but if it's china and us it's around 77 years of course there are some different figures that you will get on the on the internet and they're all uh, been you know posted at var uh, various time frame but if you really look at a few more other countries which are you can say are developed countries like uk canada new zealand switzerland and australia so now from 70s so they get into the 80s and then you know it's 83 84 year, years is the life expectancy of people citizens living in that particular country for example if i'm living in australia or switzerland i might live for 83 years whereas since i'm a indian citizen i probably my you know life expectancy is around 70 years so now you see the disparity between these two uh, life spans of two different countries so 13 saal ka difference hai when we are looking at you know few countries but if you if we go a little further and then really look at ki what's happening with the human health and the life span of various countries across the world so then i think we need to really look at what's the population right now of the world ki duniya mein aaj kitne log jeete hain if you go to the website which uh, you know uh, which gives you the live data so of course the number keeps increasing every moment but right now the estimate is that you know there is close to 800 crores you know 8000 million people are living in the world right now and every year we have 13 crores you know 130 million babies new born babies uh, you know taking birth every year so you can see the number of births that are happening every day and then we also have deaths every year for various reasons whether it was covid 19 uh, or a pandemic which killed a lot of people together or maybe a lot of other life threatening diseases or just the age uh, factor so there are 7 uh, crores so but in essence you'll see our population in the planet earth is increasing by 8 crores 80 million people every year but jab hi hum log bharat ki baat karte hain india ki baat karte hain so in india we have a population estimated to be around 141 crores 140 crores pakad lijiye and then we have 2 and a half crores people 25 million people take uh, you know babies uh, taking birth every year har saal 2.5 crore bacche paida hote hain india mein and almost nearly a crore of people halaki this number has come down in the last uh, recent years it's around between 85 90 95 lakhs ke aas pass hai every year the number changes the life expectancy in india is growing but if you see around 1 and 1/2 crore se hamara bhi population badh raha hai so that means this these are the number of people who are now 
taking, you know, uh, they're, they're breathing in the planet Earth. I and you are all are a part of these numbers. But just look at this, that the life expectancy of all these people is very, very drastically different. There's a huge difference of as many as maybe around 15 to 20 years, depending on the country that we are all living in. So, uh, you know, just a very interesting factor is that okay, the modern healthcare industry has drastically progressed. We are now talking about uh, okay, uh, robotic, uh, you know, surgeries, honge, telemedicine is coming and, uh, you know, so many progression that has happened. You know, there are some new vaccines, new molecules that are being found out for various diseases earlier, which were not treatable. Like, at the same time, look at the other side. The flip side of uh, the reality is that the number of diseases have also dramatically increased. Number of diseases, technology has increased in the healthcare industry. Mein isse kam nahi hua hai. So we are now confronting new types of diseases or lifestyle conditions. Take, for example, insomnia. Kai salom pehle logon ko neend nahi aati thi, e bimari nahi hoti thi. People were not considering this as a condition that needs to be treated. Maybe people were a little bit of stress and then probably they had a you know disturbed sleep. But insomnia was never really considered as a lifestyle disorder or a disease. But today insomnia is a treatable disease. A lot of people are you know uh, taking a lot of sleeping pills and that, that that has been also being misused a few times. So you can see this is happening and people have a erratic lifestyle and uh, sleep patterns have completely changed whether it is because of the call centers or the BPOs or the social media that's invading our privacy and, you know, people are probably not sleeping even after midnight. So, ek ho gaya insomnia. Look at uh, infertility for a, for, a, for a disease or a condition. People today are willing to invest or spend. I wouldn't even say invest. People are willing to spend not lakhs, even crores of rupees just to have one offspring. And just imagine it's a business couple having a lot of assets. They want their offspring and they don't mind spending crores of rupees because medically or clinically, they probably are not able to, you know, the 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 uh, uh, the wife or the, the expecting mother is not able to conceive. So we have new situations and new conditions because of the change to patterns. So if you really go back to our ancient scriptures, uh, medical scripts like Ayurveda, for example, it actually talks about the human beings, human body can sustain for uh, you know 120 years. So, 20 years we can live. But look at what the government is saying on the other hand. So, all the administrations across the world, uh, but let's say specifically, Bharat ki, India ki baat karenge. Uh, in the private sector, 58 years is where you retire. Retire, you know, you, you, you are not no more useful to a corporate uh, or a company that you're working with. You retire that now your priority is to take care of your health. Spend time with your grandchildren if, if you have. And then, you know, aram ko. You know, your intellectual contribution, your physical contribution and all the vast experience that you have in your practical life, uh, wo, you know, bekar ja hai because you don't really uh, need it. Government sector, mein, it could be 60 years. So, 58, 60 years, we have retirement, ke agar hum log baat karte hai, I feel that, you know, the life really starts after 50 because uh, when we are born, we are not coming with, uh, you know, we are not born with any instruction manual as to how to be happy, how to be healthy. You know, we, we don't know how to be successful, uh, you know, how to manage our money. So all this is not there in our curriculum, the existing education curriculum that we uh, we have, or probably at least some of us who have studied already. Of course, the national education policy has come and then things might change. The curriculum might change. But what we do is we actually do a lot of trial and error method and trial error and method karte karte hum log galtiyan karte hai, seekte hai, then we know what's right, what's wrong and then somehow we uh, feel that okay now I have a little experience, I have matured enough and then I've seen life. You know, hum log bolte ke, I've seen life, I, I know I've gone through a lot of things and when we are ready to sort of live life, the government or the private companies say that you are retired. You are no more needed. You are, you, are, you, you are a useless utility. So this is exactly what the hard reality is. So if you really look at the global population, we have the men living 70 years, 70 or 71 years, and women living, the good news is around 75 and more, 76 years. So on an average, it is 73.2 years is the human life expectancy or the longevity or the lifespan is what we can call. So the good news, if you are a female or a woman here, uh, you, you are tend to live 
uh, five years more than the men. Now we know the secret of, uh, uh, you know, why, uh, you know, probably you, you might know a few things, uh, you know, think or two better than the men as to how to live longer because you have that innate ability and because of the physiology that women live longer. But if you really look at some of the top countries that, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the life expectancy, country citizen you have countries like Hong Kong, Japan, Macau, uh, Switzerland, of course, Singapore. And uh, I've marked that in yellow because I'll come back to Singapore. It's very significant to the topic that we are talking today. And of course, uh, countries like Italy, Spain, Australia, etc. So these are at the top eight uh, countries with a life expectancy of 85 years to around 83 or 84 years. So the life expectancy so the life expectancy of the people living in that country, especially the citizens, inhabitants of that country, is far better. Now look at the world average, which is 73, and the top country is 85, 85 plus. So almost 12 years cut difference. So if I am living in Hong Kong, I have a better chance or rather a higher chance of living 12 extra years. Now how much will somebody pay to live one year extra, five years extra, or 10 years extra. Now, that's a very, very awkward, uh, you know, uh, kind of a, uh, you know, a question. Because uh, how would we really know as to, you know, uh, where we can buy or how we can buy more years? We don't really have that kind of a guarantee from the medical world saying that you take my treatment, I'll ensure that you'll, you'll live five years or 10 years more. You know, everybody wishes and everybody hopes. They can have guaranteed medicines, you know, we all can experience, uh, we can all, uh, you know, have a certain number of years to our life. Now, let's come to the Indian statistics. And this data says the Indian life expectancy is, uh, for, for men, it's around uh, 69, 70 years. And women, it's 72 years. So, uh, on an average of 70 years, which I told you. Now, this is also far lesser uh, than, uh, or rather slightly lesser than the global average. So, that means... Our ranking in terms of lifespan, we are not even in the top 100. We are at 135th position. So, this means that our uh, healthcare infrastructure or the, the healthcare uh, sector uh, has tremendous scope to improve itself and help the citizens of this country to live longer. Okay, So, this is the lifespan of the people. Now, coming to specific states. Uh, well, of course, this data is from 2012 to 16 ka cycle hai. Now, you will see uh, smaller states like Kerala, Delhi, or even Jammu Kashmir, Punjab have higher life expectancy when we talk about state-wise in India. You know, it's not just 70, 72, it's 75 on an average. I'm talking about the crores of millions of population that we have. But then if you see large state like Uttar Pradesh is having 64.8%. So if you see the disparity between state-wise in different countries. So it either is depending on, uh, uh, you know, the, the literacy level. Because if education is more good, I think your understanding about your own health also is enhanced. You will have better choices made in terms of your food habits, your sleeping patterns, and a lot of other uh, allied things that keep you healthy. Uh, we are also looking at, uh, uh, you know, the, the geographical area. If a smaller state, hai, it's better and easier to administer and provide uh, facilities, whether it's healthcare or wellness facilities or any other, uh, you know, things that uh, help uh, people, you know, expand their, their lifestyle, uh, lifespan. And we are also looking at medical facilities, the medical infrastructure, the, the healthcare sector, the, uh, you know, the health establishments like hospitals and nursing homes and, you know, clinics, uh, the number of doctors, the patient and uh, the doctor ratio, which is, unhealthy in India. So, uske mein bhi hum log de sakte hai. and then we also have uh, the, the economic status. If people are well to do, the, the, the per capita income is better. I think they will have better food, better quality of food. They'll have uh, nutritious food. They probably will be able to buy uh, food, which, uh, uh, which probably can nourish them better. Lekin sare aisi, uh, jaga hai. Now, you know, in India, we are talking about caste surveys, economic surveys, and then you will see that people are living with a very small income that does not allow them to eat the kind of food that they desire to eat. They eat for hunger. And uh, you know, this is exactly what's happened. So then the tradition and culture. India is a 
country of diverse cultures and uh, ethnicity, food habits. You will see, you know, variety of Indian foods. So the states which are sticking to their own traditional foods without really getting influenced by the fast foods and, you know, the, the so-called, uh, you know, the, the processed foods have a better chance to live longer. So when we are talking today about blue zone diet, so this is a background that I want to create so that we exactly know why life expectancy uh, is a matter uh, that that we need to be uh, really uh, talking about today. And uh, then, of course, we are also looking at political narrative. Ki, uh, you know, what are the schemes, various welfare measures of the government in that particular state? Uh, what kind of an attention that they're giving for the primary health care and in the rural sector, etc. So, yeah, bahut sare parameters ke upar, uh, you know, the life expectancy is, uh, it, it, you know, it varies. So if you are in different states here, you will see that, you know, the chances of we having a, a longer life, a better lifespan is higher because of the facilities that are available in that particular state. Now, coming to the longevity and then we really understand what is blue zones and uh, blue zone key uh, diet, kya hai, what are the things that they're doing? So, uh, so you know, uh, you know, your human lifespan starts with prenatal condition and then infancy, aati hai, early childhood. Then there is a late childhood. Then you are into adolescence period. You are either a child nor a youth. And then you have early adulthood, middle adulthood and late adulthood. And, you know, after 65 years, you are like an adult. You've seen life. You've seen all kinds of, you know, life cycle. And you feel that, uh, you know, this is exactly how life works. So if you really, really look at uh, the lifespan, go back to 1954, the lifespan was as low as 28, 30 years. People were not surviving for longer, except for a few people. This I'm talking about ki overall populations. Ke agar baat but if you see every five years, six years, ka agar span mein hum log dekhenge, by the year 2014, we have 69, 72 years. So that means the lifespan has completely or drastically enhanced. People are now living longer. But unfortunately, uh, people are living shorter and dying longer. So that means... They, you know, this, this is a concept that we speak in the wellness field that, uh, he, you know, people are, people are there. People have facilities, medical facilities. They have a lot of supplements today. The lifestyle access uh, is much better. There are better choices one can make. But in spite of that, people are not really enjoying because there are a lot of lifestyle disorders. What are the things they need to keep treating them? And there's another theory that says, that average human life expectancy in the 19th century has drastically increased, but it is now stagnant. You know, average life expectancy across the world, universe, so it's around 80 years. So 120 years ka jo Ayurveda ya alag therapies ka jo estimate hai ya kind of a, uh, you know, lifespan ka expectation unka hai ki haan, human being, uh, human body, anatomy and physiology ke, uh, through sustain kar sakta hai. That's not really coming true. So there is a theory that says, you know, you we probably may not have uh, the number of years increasing exponentially the way it's been, uh, you know, ex expressed uh, here uh, year-wise. But we are into genetics. Velocity genetics is into the space of nutrigenomics. So when we talk about the innovations that are happening in the field of genetics, the kind of experiments that are, you know, um, uh, that, that are happening right now, and we are historically living in a time where a lot of things are happening which you cannot even imagine. You know, 20, 30 years before, we probably couldn't have imagined what the chat GPT or the artificial intelligence or the machine learning and a lot of other things that uh, can come up uh, in the future. So we, we don't even have a, an idea as to what's going to happen in the next 10, 15 years. So pe, there are theories today which says that you can actually live up to 300 years, 500 years and even a thousand years. Now, just imagine there's an old woman uh, in, in 2017. She probably will be looking in, in 3017 like this and she'll she'll be like 1093 years old. Now, it, it might sound like, a, you know, mythology kind of, a, a, you know, a fairy tale a story. But then the science claims that it is going to be true. So we are we are at a historically a very, very significant time frame. So, uh, and you know, uh, uh, aging. Ke mein, I'll, I'll speak a little uh, later uh, in a few slides. So now, what are the factors that are deciding the lifespan of different people? You know, uh, we look at looked at the top countries. 
uh, we looked at some regions in India. So, you know, life expectancy difference. So as a genetics company, I would like to say that uh, there are only two factors that determine. Dohi factors eh, that determine the lifespan of a particular person. Okay, irrespective of where they live. The first one is your genetics, your heredity. Anuanshi is You know, the bohat, uh, sare generations hai, jo hum log carry kar rahe. So that information is very, very critical for longevity. So that's one part. What's the other part? Yes, what probably could be the other uh, aspect that can uh, that can determine what the lifespan of all of us. I want you to uh, you know throw your answers and then you know just in the text box and then see if you're guessing it right. And I'm sure I'm I'm sure ki most of you will get it right as to what is something the other factor. Yeah, Raki, you're right. Uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, your answer is right. So it's lifestyle. So Siddesh, you're right. Yeah, okay, Jitu, you're also right. So you know, all these factors I would put together in one word, and we let's call it epigenetics. Epigenetics. So the layman word is lifestyle. Halaki epigenetics ka genetic ke perspective mein uska definition thoda sa alag hai. But then just for a real layman understanding, just to put it in a you know, common, simple English language, not a technical uh, you know, jargon. So let's call it epigenetics. Epigenetics is what? Genetics se upar. Genetics ke alawa. I know more than genetics. So a lot of things that have an impact on the genetics as well. So it could be your food, your timing, your exercise, and so many things. So now what percentage is determined by your genetics and what percentage is determined by your lifestyle. Now, it depends on what are the uh, factors that we are, uh, uh, you know, we are talking about. For example, if you're talking about intelligence, IQ. IQ is, they say, almost 32% is, uh, you know, hereditary and 68% is something that you acquire through various means of, you know, acquiring knowledge. You, you go to school, college, university, you read books, you attend seminars, you, you know, do so many other uh, research and then you acquire that knowledge and then uh, halaki, there is a difference between intelligence, IQ and uh, knowledge. Uh, you know, they're, they're not two different things. I mean, they're not the same thing. They're two different things. But of course, we in, in common day-to-day uh, -day life, we interchangeably use it. So my, and you know, if you're looking at cancer as a disease for, for that matter, if we cancer, ke hum log baat karenge, to hereditary factor could be just around 5 to 10%. 80, 80, 90 percent could be your lifestyle and the induced, uh, you know, factors. That could be a, a list of a long, a long list of many things. So I would say, genetics is almost 20 percent impact karta hai on our longevity or the lifespan and the lifestyle, the choices that we make. And we'll come to what are the choices that uh, can determine our lifespan. Uh, I would call it lifestyle choices or the epigenetics. They matter almost 80%. So in spite of having bad genetics or maybe, you know, some risk factors uh, for not a longer life, I think uh, the life uh, lifestyle choices, if they're very carefully done uh, with a lot of education, with a lot of scientific evidence uh, to every choices that we are making, uh, I think we, we can mitigate those kind of risk factors and expand our lifespan for a long time. Why? Simply because of this. Because genetics is just you know it's like a loaded gun the loaded gun in itself may not kill a person but there there has to be a trigger and the trigger is our lifestyle the choices that we are making on a day to day basis you know while we are uh, doing this webinar i can hear uh, you know firecrackers happening now that also is a choice there are so many uh, factors uh, there are there are some good things about uh, those firecrackers and there are so many adverse effects of that firecrackers so, you know, we've been talking about it. There have been some litigations. There has been mixed, uh, you know, reactions and stands people are taking on this subject. So coming to the topic is that genetics is one factor that determines the longevity or lifespan. But what really matters is our lifestyle. But genetics is not something that is in, in our hands because when I was born, I, I did not really have control on my genetics. I was born to particular parents, father and mother. I had no choice. I couldn't choose my father, you know, like Robert Kiyosaki says, you know, he had a rich dad and a poor dad. So economically, you can have different dads. Politically, you can have another dad. In Bollywood, a lot of people have godfathers and got, you know, all kinds of dads and, you know, uh, mentors. But biologically, we didn't really have a choice. So genetics, we had no control. But what we have 
control over is our lifestyle choices. Choices That is very much in our hands. So what kind of commitment that we have to make the right choices or what kind of a knowledge that we have is very, very critical for our longevity. So genetics does matter, but not beyond a point. But it's very, very critical because your lifestyle choices have to be based on the genetic risk factors as well. So let's come back to what are the epigenetic factors. Ki kya kya cheeze hum log apne control mein kar sakte and then we straight away go and understand what's blue zone and what are the diets that they have. First, of course, is, is food. Food keeps us alive. Food keeps us nourished. Foods, food allow us to do all kind of activities that we are able to do. So we have to be, uh, uh, you know, your... your uh, uh, the, the food has to be balanced food. We have heard this, we have studied this in the uh, in the primary schooling or etc. But I think later we have not talked much about this. If we are not health and wellness industry, we have not studied a lot of nutrition because we are eating well, we are eating the kind of food that we want. Today we have all kinds of food joints, processed food, ready mix and everything. So it's easy to create food and consume food that can keep us growing horizontally more than uh, nourishing us and then you know taking care of every vital organ of our human body second of course is the the kind of water that we drink firstly the amount of water that we drink and uh, the quality of water that, uh, that we drink so it's advised or recommended that you know if you have water content that is strong and better in alkaline is always better so that uh, you can get rid of a lot of acidic uh, factors that are there in human body. Then we also need to have clean air. You know, I just talked about firecrackers. Look at what's happening in Delhi right now. You know, there is this odd even scheme already started. There's a lot of political furor. Even the Supreme Court is getting involved. Uh, there's this rubble, uh, stubble burning that's happening in uh, neighboring uh, states, agricultural states. And interestingly, it has, it is Mumbai, the, the, you know, commercial capital of India, which has beaten uh, Delhi in terms of the air quality index. So, you know, Mumbai is quite worse. There is a guideline yesterday by the government saying that don't move out in the morning for morning walk because uh, it will be more damaging than uh, the benefits it can give you. So we are now living in this kind of situation. So this also is a key factor for our uh, you know longevity or, uh, you know, for our lifespan. Uh, the kind of exercise that we should be doing. So we have to be sp doing specific exercises for different particular, uh, you know, uh, body parts. For example, if you want to do muscles, you have to definitely do weight training. You can't be going for a jogging or a doing a yoga and expecting you to be, you know, uh, you know, become a bodybuilder. You don't become a bodybuilder with a yoga or a swimming. So you need to do particular exercise to take care of that particular body part. So uh, exercise also is has to be very critical i mean it's very clear it has to be specific we have seen what's happening after especially covid 19 a lot of people who had uh, sudden cardiac arrest related diseases and uh, you know uh, in, in, in many cases it has been fatal and uh, recently we saw ki abhi navratri hua in gujarat mein we saw a lot of uh, uh, a, you know increased number of uh, cardiovascular uh, conditions you know cvds and uh, people are getting treated people you know collapsed and died you know there was a ninth class student walks into a exam hall collapses ninth class student we have never heard all this that also is because of various factors so we need to be doing exercise regularly but i put everything else in the big you know uh, 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 factor segment called the modern lifestyle even nutrition you know water intake uh, you know, clean air, exercise, all this is a part of the modern lifestyle Lifestyle itself, you know, epigenetics itself. But I would like to look at also sleep patterns, you know, what time you're sleeping, what time you're eating, uh, you're waking up. So it's not just enough to sleep uh, for seven or eight hours, but what time you sleep and wake up also is as critical as uh, sleeping for seven, eight hours. Look at our addictions to today, apart from the alcohol and, uh, you know, smoking, which are like two popular uh, you know, addictions, we have, uh, you know, all kinds of addictions today. Uh, what is addiction? A simple definition is that uncontrolled ho ke karte ho, and you don't even realize that, you know, you're doing it that in excess, you know, anything in excess is an addiction. It could be social media or watching too much of a TV or even gossip could be an addiction. So all these things are impacting also uh, the lifespan. Uh, look at the stress, the stress that we have, financial stress, who doesn't have it? Okay, people are, uh, 
people have all kinds of uh, expenses today. Everybody wants to have uh, artificial lifestyle, which may or may not give that kind of happiness that a person is looking at. But people want to possess a lot of things, materialistic things, you know, real estate, uh, precious metals, all kinds of electronic gadgets. You know, there was a Mahayam in uh, Delhi for uh, procuring an iPhone on the first day. And there was a literally fights. You know, why Why would you go at uh, four o'clock in the morning and then you know, be in a queue to, uh, you know, procure an iPhone, uh, uh, iPhone 15? Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's beyond logic. Okay, then, of course, family, the relationship stress today. Uh, the number of di divorces are increasing. The num num you know the connections are getting more business oriented. There's a lot of plastic smiles going around. All that. Then of course financial insecurity, which I told you, and also the environment. So all these factors. There are many things. So these are all. Yes, sabhi factors hain jisse ki hamari lifestyle mein asar padta hai. And this is exactly what we're doing. So now there was a lot of uh, research that was happening as to what's the right thing to do. What's the right time to sleep? What are the right food to eat, etc.? And that is where Dan Butner is a researcher uh, from US. Now he finds out, and then you know he and his team does a lot of research, and he then authors a book based on his finding, and that book is called The Blue Zones: The Secrets for Living Longer. I'm sure all of us would like to live longer. And in his book, if I make a small summary of his book, or probably you know look at his finding. So what he did is he found out that there are certain areas, there are certain zones in the world which he identified and his team identified and they, they named it as the blue zones. So there are there are five zones that are being identified. So the, the five zones are, uh, the, the, the first is a place called Loma Linda from United States. Uh, Nicoya is a small island in Costa Rica. We have Sardinia in Italy. We have Icaria in Greece and Okinawa in Japan. Now, what? why are they called blue zones? Isko blue zones ka naam kyo diya hai? It's a very simple de definition. The blue zones are regions or these zones where a higher than usual number of people, it's not just one, two, five, ten people. It's a considerable percentage of the population of that particular region and area is living much longer than the average lifespan. You just imagine, for example, Let's say people from Surat are living like 100 and 105, 110 years. So everybody in India would say that ki yaar, Surat mein kya aisi, uh, ajeeb cheez hai ya kya aise log karte hai ki jisse ki that city ke log zyada lambi jivan jite hai. So this is, uh, this was a subject of a uh, lot of, uh, you know, interest to the researchers and they found out that, you know, these are the five areas that, uh, uh, that are very important uh, and they, they they studied their lifestyle practices, the epigenetic choices that people are making and you know that is where this book is all about. So the book is about discovering the world's best practices in health and longevity. Ke health ke liye kya karna sahi hai? Now you, you attend a lot of webinars and a lot of videos on YouTube etc. Everybody seems to be suggesting that you do this, this will happen, this will happen, you know dark chocolates are good for you you see a search and another video is saying dark chocolates are like full of caffeine. It's not good for you. You get confused. You don't really know what to do. Somebody says ki Ayurveda is good. Somebody says homeopathic is good. Somebody says ki instant result ke liye allopathy ke alawa kuch bhi nahi hai. So there are so many recommendations, so many prescriptions that we all have. So we are in a very confused state. So here with a lot of fact finding, with a lot of research, they found out as to what are the practices that these people are having where they are living more than 100 years or even longer than that. So, so the best practices for health in longevity and putting them to work in our life. So this is the book written by Dan Putner. So there are some of the things that, uh, you know, uh, are represented again. Uh, all these people who lived uh, more than 100 years. Now, if you really looked at the initial slides that we had, none of the countries is boasting about an average life uh, span of 100 years. 85, 86, sabse zyada hai. on an average, it's around 80 years. But people in this region were actually living 100 years. And they were actually making up for those people, other people who are probably dying at a younger age of 40, 50, 60s. And now we know, uh, you know we are in so many social gr uh, groups, uh, religious groups. So there's this news coming of uh, various obituaries and everything. You know, my interest uh, many a times is to, you know, look at the numbers, uh, the age in the bracket. 
as to what is his age. You know, when, when somebody expires at the age of 80 plus, you feel that, okay, the person has lived a life. You feel sad for every death, of course. But I like that, Chalo, theke, it's okay, natural age related. But when, you know, people die at a very young age, you know, premature uh, death, we would say, at the age of 30s and 40s and 50s, which has now become like common. So here, the people were living more than 100 years. And that's where they were called centenarians. Centenarians is, uh, you know, they, they hit a century. Now there's a, a one-day World Cup going on, ODI, uh, you know, men's cricket World Cup is going on. And if you hit a century, I mean, like you become a hero. Just imagine hitting a century in our own personal life uh, in terms of the number of years, not, not you know, biological years. I think it's, uh, I think you need to understand certain secrets. So, so you know, if you can see your uh, pictorially, uh, they also give a lot of, uh, you know, uh, images of various foods and everything. So let's understand as to what is a blue zone diet. So, uh, you know, being a genetics company, I want to tell you this, that food definitely changes your genes. Technically, it's not, a it, it gene doesn't change. But the gene regulation happens. You know, the, the, the expression of the gene can be switched on and switched off. So that means food can work as a very, very effective remedy or a medicine for certain conditions. So if we know the secret, if we know the secret as to what kind of food is suitable for my particular body, because I and you are not the same. You know, we are similar, but we are not the same. You know, we are so different in our uh, physical traits, our emotional traits. You know, you might get, uh, 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 you know, you might be a very jovial person. I may be a very short-tempered person. You may be a happy-go-lucky person. I may be a very, uh, you know, kadoos person and all kinds of emotional behavioral traits. So we are also different. How can the food be the same? For example, you know, yesterday I was speaking to one of our doctors and he's saying that our food habits in India, for example, if you go down south to Kerala, and if you see the food habits, they're not the same exactly like, you know, what a Punjabi would eat. So you have South Indian cuisine, you have a Gujarati cuisine, a Maharashtrian cuisine, all that. But when it comes to medicine, let's say anasin, for, for example, you don't, have, you don't have a South Indian anasin or a Punjabi anasin or, uh, you know, Bengali anasin. You have one molecule and that's being given to everybody. So where's the logic? If the food is so different and it suits that particular region, the medicine also has to be different or even even the food also has to be different for different individuals so of course you know that's something we were talking about pharmacogenomics so pharmacogenomics is another very uh, uh, you know intriguing subject it is a growing subject of a lot of interest to medical world as to how we can create particular uh, personalized medicine for a, a particular person right now it's not uh, economically feasible to do that the pharma and the uh, whatever nexus that we have will collapse and people wouldn't really venture into it uh, to make profits. But from a scientific perspective, yes, that has a lot of scope and uh, we need to be, we probably will get there in a few years, but it's, it's too early. Right now, the ecosystem of the healthcare system is working on uh, generic molecules that are being uh, given. And, uh, you know, we have seen a lot of articles. I think I had forwarded one of the articles to some of the groups where uh, there was a pharma company producing uh, uh, tablets and, uh, you know, kind of medicine. And then they found out that it was actually chuna. Tha. So chuna matlab, wake me literally chuna laga di. Anyway, so now coming to the blue zone diet. So, you know, you understood what are the blue zone diets. So there, once again, let's, let's you know, quickly go through this. This is Loma Linda in California, USA. We have Nicoya in Costa Rica and the, uh, the South America. We have Sardinia in Italy, Icaria in Greece and Okinawa in Japan. Now, their lifestyle choice, choices, their epigenetic practices are actually making them live longer. Now, now, for example, let's look at Sardinia in Italy. Now, Italy is a uh, you know European country. So now you see they are consuming forty-seven percent whole grains, and in Italy, the whole grains primarily was uh, you know grains was barley, and almost twenty-six percent dairy products. You know, it could be a lot of different dairy products like milk, curds, yogurt, and whatever. And then, you know, of course, they were consuming uh, most common sources of uh, their milk was sheep and goat's milk, not cow or buffalo milk. 12% vegetables, 4% legumes, 5% uh, meat, fish, poultry, 3% added sugar as well, and 2% added fats and 1% fruits. Now, look at 
some very interesting factors. Almost, uh, you know what, 63, 73% uh, is whole grains and dairy. So they were not vegans. Mind you, a lot of people will now recommend that, you know, vegan, you know, Virat Kohli is a vegan. So, you know, look at his fitness, 49 centuries, he might probably hit, uh, you know, another another century and become the, the, the number one uh, ODI century holder. All that can be fine. But look at here, they were also taking non-vegetarian food. So they were taking meat, they were taking fish, they are taking poultry as well. So, and then also look at the amount of fruits they were eating, only 1%. Now, we all recommend that, you know, we need to be eating a lot of fruits. Now, this is for a country and a zone of Sardinia of Italy. Now, we cannot blindly follow this and say that, you oh, know, this is what they do it, did it in Italy, so let's do it. No, we are not Italians. We are Indians or probably, you know, any other nationality. So, a uh, blind uh, imitation will not work. We need to really personalize. And they also were taking sugars, added sugars, you know, the processed sugars which we now consider is the, the big, uh, you know, issue right now. So if you really look at, there are some things that they were doing right. They, they based on the zone that they were in, they were actually taking whole grains and dairy products. But predominantly, you would see that whether they were vegetarians or non-vegetarians, well, you can say that they were non-vegetarians also. But look at the percentage of non-vegetarian food consumption. It's less than 5%. So they were 95% vegetarians. And of course, they also added, uh, they took added sugars and so many other things. So it was a very natural evolving, uh, you know, a kind of a food uh, percentage of various, uh, you know, uh, uh, factors. Let's look at what's happening in California, USA. Now, that's a different continent altogether, uh, not Italy or not, uh, you know, European countries. So now here you see they were taking 33% vegetables and for a surprise, 27% fruit. So that's almost what, 60% vegetables and fruits. So now in Italy, we saw that only 1% of fruits. So 12% legumes and soy, 10% dairy products. So the percentage of dairy products now is uh, you know, lesser here. So once again, these were also taking 4% of meat and poultry. So that means they were also not vegetarians. They were also non-vegetarians, but predominantly vegetarian plant sources is what they had. And of course, they used to consume fish as well, but very low on that and 2% nuts and seeds. So this is another pattern uh, the 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 uh, the research team found out, okay? So this is the second thing. Now let's look at what's happening in Japan. Now Japan is a country of so many uh, wellness theories and so many, you know, health practices, one of the longest uh, living population. So this concept of ik ikigai, I'm sure, you know, you must have heard this uh, concept and attended webinars on this or attended seminars on this. You know, this is the management subject uh, when we're talking about uh, our purpose in life, etc. So now Ikigai, uh, you know, if you really quickly go, get into it, if you really look at, you know, okay, this is my vision, my mission of my life. This is the occasion of my life. So, you know, I'm contributing to the entire world what it needs. Agar ye philosophy mein mein jayenge, so you might probably get into a zone where you're saying there's a lot of excitement, but there is a little bit of complacency and sense of uncertainty. You're not sure if you're doing everything right. Uh, there could be uh, you know, this kind of a zone that you can get in. If you really look at, okay, my occasion is that like, I want to entertain the whole world and then I become like an actor or a singer or maybe I want to give good health to the population of the world uh, or, you know, the people around in my area. So, I become a medical doctor. So, that's my profession. And what you can be paid for. So, it also gives you, you know, enough economic stability. And you may be comfortable, but feeling emptiness. You will feel that I'm making I'm doing well, but then there is still something missing. There, there are some other factors of life also that you need to be looking at. So look at look at the other aspect that, you know, if you have a profession and passion, you know, coming together and you're doing what you're good at. For example, Lata Mangeshkar was told that you become a Kathak dancer by her parents forced into, you know, that profession. She probably still would have become a good dancer, but then she would have, wouldn't have been happy. Probably she wouldn't have been enjoying because that's not a passion. It became probably her profession. In that case, you may be satisfied, but you're feeling that you're not, you know, a feeling of usefulness be asked. But if you're doing, you know, your passion with a lot of mission and then you're doing what you love, you may be having delightful and you may be, you know, having fullness, but you may not be paid for it. You know, you might feel that okay, but I'm not paid for it. So a combination of everything in uh, balance can then get into a zone of ikigai. And this concept is like, you know, you live for a purpose. You live for 
a particular mission uh, for for a cause for a crusade in your life so iski wajah se this you know a balance factor about life also is contributing to the well being uh, fitness uh, better sleep factors and overall well being of a human being and that also is considered as one of the observations in the blue zone areas of okinawa japan so you know people in japan uh, one of my friends who often visits there uh, because of business purposes he says that people walk a lot there and if you really miss a place right now and this i'm talking about a few years back uh, that you know if you really want a new address to reach to they will actually hold your hand almost and then you know take you and then walk along with you and they show that place and then you know stop there so they like walking and they use less vehicles uh, things may have changed uh, uh, right now so this is something that's there so now putting a few things together of okinawa japan uh, sardinia italy and uh, you know of uh, Loma Linda of uh, United States. So they found that you know they have healthy social circle. They eat a lot of nuts here in uh, United States. Uh, in Okinawa, there's no time urgency. So there's they're, they're quite relaxed, cool, calm, collected. They, they they don't do a lot of firefighting. They take it easy. They plan well. Uh, Likeability. They use turmeric a lot. And Sardinia, they say they they're using a lot of legumes, beans, high uh, polyphenol wine. They used to consume because of the the weather there. and it's quite a cold country and so many other factors but what really came up which is very common that everybody was practicing is their relationship or the association or the tie up or the kind of the importance they give their to their families now you'll be surprised saying that this is expanding the life span of people you know having a very close to family relationship without uh, many disputes whether it's financial relationship is expanding the life span by almost 7 years no smoking of course it's a bad addiction i don't really understand why people smoke uh, the lungs go for a toss a plant heavy diet so all the uh, you know five blue zones were very heavy on plant uh, kingdom plant diets okay so they were uh, you know very high rich uh, fiber uh, fiber rich uh, you know diet that they had constant but moderate physical activity they were not like uh getting into the treadmill and then doing very intensive activities or weight lifting or something like that but they were doing moderate activity like walking jogging or maybe yoga or similar and but doing it very constantly on a regular basis almost on a daily basis a lot of social engagement you know we isko hum log nazar andaaz karte hain saying that look you know today so much of a nuclear family self centeredness has come selfishness has come that people Uh, don't really look at that you know your important i mean the importance of the society uh, as an ecosystem for our own uh, well being our own uh, you know uh, longevity and then of course legumes so these were the common things that were found out so just to make a summary of what they did is uh, let's say for example this is a japanese diet uh, look at uh, a few factors here you know if you pay close attention to the the the, the screen here you will see first of all look at the portion size you will see the vessel size as well they are the quite uh, small it's like a quarter plate so portion size is small you will see a lot of variety of food it's not that they eating one food for example uh, india mein ya uh, office goers jo bhi hain jitne bhi office goers jo tiffin leke jaate especially in, you know i'm from mumbai so i can talk about uh, what's happening in this uh, in, in the tiffins what do the people really eat they eat two or three chapatis and a sabzi now that's something that they eat almost 25 days of their office work that's tiffin you know ki lunch box hai and then they they carry a very small lunch box so that only mitigates hunger um, just tell me what kind of uh, nourishment that it gives you know what kind of uh, macronutrients micronutrient vitamins and everything it has you know it has very very less uh, nutrient so there's no variety there it's the same food that being consumed day in and day out looking at look at the different colors and of course there is a science of we eating uh different uh, uh foods of different colors so we'll not get into the details and then also look at the source of the food it's more more or less is vegetarian you know plant based food so this is something that the blue zone people were practicing now there's a very another very interesting concept called the life radius 90% of the time hum log hamare ghar mein rehte hain ghar se zyada thoda dur bhi jayenge you know we we probably travel 90% of the time in almost 5 kilometers radius most of the time unless of course of course you know we are like business people 
with the heavy travel so almost 90% of the time what are the places that we really visit you know just look at the circumference uh, you know radius of our movement we are at either at home ya to hum log koi social networks mein jaate hain ki you know we go to the schools or you know uh, religious places or we uh, we go on some purpose with volunteering karte hain ya to hum log dukaan mein jaate hain bazaar mein jaate hain market jaate hain malls jaate hain and we don't go to a mall to buy a grocery shop we don't travel 30 40 50 kilometers we go nearby place and we go to offices hamare dukaan shops offices you know work places in general and we go to restaurants for eating out you know tea coffee peene ke liye snacks ke liye dinners ke liye birthday parties ke liye we go to a nearby place and then we probably visit schools and religious places like mandir gaye masjid gaye church gaye or gurudwara gaye etc so all these are the things that we are doing and then we are eating almost the same food the entire day so this is the life radius and just imagine ki if you are not paying attention to these things that is indirectly is causing our uh, you know ill health to all of us mentally physically and so many other things so not having empathy towards all these factors you know let's say uh our children are studying in a school and we don't really care about how the school is functioning what's really happening there what kind of activities are, not, are doing so our involvement is very limited our involvement is limited we send them to the coaching classes we send them to online classes you know byjus this and that so we spend money but then there is no connection there so that's missing and that also is causing lifestyle related uh diseases and then ultimately causing uh, problems with the life span so as a summary blue zone jo five zones hai which i mentioned to you earlier they came out with a theory saying that there are nine factors and they called it blue zone power nine and i want you to pay attention to this ki agar ye hum log follow karenge and of course not blindly i'll come to the other part also because we are a genetics based company we provide gene based solutions i'll come to it but let's quickly understand what are those nine factors so are you ready yes then let's look at first is move naturally so that means moving without thinking about it do not to planning too much basically it talks about physical activities you know moving naturally you're walking a lot just imagine that today for half a kilometer 1 kilometer we are booking ola uber or we want two wheelers four wheelers people are very very reluctant to walk people you know today what's really killing people is this sitting the job sitting job people who are sitting more than 6 hours 7 hours every day either in their in their workplace or at home etc their life span is coming down by almost 10 to 12 years so that means just imagine that we are sitting and hum log bolte hai ki bhai baithe hain hum log aaram hai aaram nahi hai you are cutting down almost 8 10 12 years of our life span only by sitting so that means we need to be moving moving a lot walking all the time and today we have uh, gadgets electronic gadgets actually tell you the number of steps that you are walking you also have water reminders and all other things but you have 10000 steps is uh, is been propagated ki isko karna zaruri hai lately people are not talking about not even 10000 even if you are doing 5000 steps going stairs instead of taking lifts all this is contributing to not just your well being but also the life span by a few years just imagine so this is the first one is move naturally so as far as possible we need to find ways matlab bahana chahiye humko ki chalne ka ki theek hai main aake aapko milta hu or you know not taking vehicles uh, for a short distance the second one is 80% rule which is say, which is basically about portion size ki how much you eat what you is a different subject ki wo uh, you know gene based diet hai and you 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 will have all kinds of diets today you know you have keto diet your paleo diet you have uh, the the carbs rich diet protein rich diet and what not everything is there you have intermittent fasting etc but that is more about how what you are eating but here whenever you are eating you need to be eating at a regular time and eating only 80% of your stomach capacity aur ye to ayurveda mein bhi bola hai ki you know divide your stomach into three parts matlab aise literally mat karo uh, imaginary and then you have 33% one part is your solid foods 33% is water or liquid food and 33% ko khali chhod do so that your digestion is good and then your satiety levels are really good so that means uh, don't overeat many a times we have this feeling saying that ki order kiya hai to abhi khana hi padega nahi to waste ho jayega a waste ke chakkar mein you are actually damaging and actually cutting down the number of years of our life this is impacting 
the longevity and lifespan of our life. Third, of course, is the right tribe. Surrounding yourself with a healthy social circle. So that means to have genuine friends. Right now, we have colleagues. We have business friends. You know, they are the meaning of what they are. कि जब तक उनसे फायदा है वी आर फ्रेंड्स जब तक उनसे फायदा नहीं है एंड वी आर यू नो इकोनॉमी के बारे में जब भी बात करते हैं फाइनेंशियल लिटरेसी के बारे में बात करते हैं वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट एसेट्स एंड लाइबिलिटीज सो आवर फ्रेंड्स आल्सो कैन बी एसेट्स टू अस बट एट द सेम टाइम समटाइम्स दे कैन बी ऑल्सो लाइबिलिटीज सो वी गेट रेड ऑफ देम बिकॉज लाइबिलिटीज को हटाना है तो व्हाट्स रियली हैपनिंग इज दैट इवन पीपल बिकम यू नो कमोडिटीज पीपल बिकम कमोडिटीज एंड दैट्स द रीजन वी हैव the uh, very less genuine connections most of them are plastic smiles artificial you know relationships matlab ki baatein hain there are so many bollywood uh, songs also on this ki uh, you know matlab ki duniya and all that so you know we have we are very uh, you know commercially connected with each other fayda hai to tab tak hai you know you know there is a saying in uh, english that you know when you uh, when you are successful uh, there are plenty but then when you are in distress not even one in 20 So, तो लोग भाग जाते हैं बिकॉज उससे फायदा नहीं एंड दिस वी हैव सीन इन के बी सी यू नो रियालिटी शो ऑल्सो दैट यू नो वेन पीपल वन प्राइजेस एवरीबडी की उनका वो पुराना कनेक्शन की नहीं नहीं वो हम लोग साथ में पढ़ते थे हम लोग इधर कलीग्स थे तो हम दोस्त थे ऑल दैट एंड वेन दे स्पेंड देर मनी देर देर रन अवे देर आर केजेस वेर पीपल हैव बिकम बैंक आफ्टर इवन विनिंग क्रोड्स ऑफ रूपीज uh not just in kbc and so many other lotteries and everything so the friends have to be very very genuine so so yeah uh, yeah there are some comments i'll come to it uh, dr arora so yeah so you know there are right tribes so we need to have genuine friends and genuine connections we can we can't count more than you know handful of people whom we cherish throughout our life you know our friends keep changing so that's that's something that was found in blue zone that you know they had lifelong connections whether it's their spouse whether uh, their 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 relatives or genuine neighbors or community friends the next important thing is of course i was going horizontally the next uh, thing is here is purpose which is ikigai nothing but no, nothing but ikigai ikigai is ki finding ki bhai hum log is duniya mein aaye kyun aaye kyun hai kya of course you know we can give a very philosophical jawab ki saying that yaar mera choice hi nahi tha main aa gaya hu but aane ke baad mein what is our purpose इसमें थोड़ा स्पिरिचुअलिटी भी है वी नीड टू फाइंड आउट एज टू व्हाट इज माय यूज फॉर ऑफ कोर्स नॉट माय सेल्फ बट आल्सो टू अदर पीपल सो मेकिंग अ डिफरेंस यू नो दूसरों की जिंदगी में परिवर्तन लेके आना दूसरों की जिंदगी में फर्क लेके आना यू नो टू मेक अ डिफरेंस तो आई थिंक वी नीड टू बी कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटिंग दिस सो दैट्स ऑल्सो अ कॉल कॉज दैट वी नीड टू बी टेकिंग अप सो लॉट ऑफ सोशल कॉज सो यू नो द इकी गाय को हमको फाइंड आउट करना है व्हाट इज माई इकी गाय what's my purpose of my life what do i like to doing you know what gives me satisfaction so that not only gives uh, you know contribution to the society and people around you in the you know in, in turn it actually in, enhances your uh, life span so all of us need to find out our ikigai then of course plant slant plant slant is uh, I, i've already explained is that plant kingdom says zyada tar aapka food aana zaruri hai Uh, it is very rich in all the macronutrients micronutrients and there are foods which will give you all this uh, we need not really say that vitamin b12 has to come from animal sources alone there are enough foods which are giving vitamin b12 in the animal uh, in the plant kingdom as well so we can uh, we can find uh, those uh, you know uh, vegetarian sources majority that does not mean that you can you can denounce a person who is non vegetarian you can consume there is no issue but it has to be in moderation because it also has its own limitations and depending on the region that we are living in of course now when we are talking about uh, we are living in india we cannot be simply doing saying okay what italians used to do so uh, let's do this you know that's a different region the climate there is different you know it's a cold country so they probably might, must be consuming wine it doesn't really mean that we need to be starting uh, consuming wine uh, exactly the next day so uh yeah so navel thank you so much uh, adoption of ikigai a year ago transformed my life and better than my peers so exactly so finding the purpose now uh, i had very fond memories of discussing that with you in uh, delhi okay so then we have uh, the loud ones first you know who is your family i mean who is the loud ones is your family wo bolte hai ki i mean you can do all kinds of cans uh, financial you're not doing well uh, but your family always supports you you know even if when they know that you've done wrong आपने गलत किया है दे स्टिल सपोर्ट यू बिकॉज योर रिलेशनशिप विद योर फैमिली मेंबर्स आर पेरेंट्स 
you know, it's unconditioned. Uh, you know, our spouse, our children, our siblings, yes, sabi hai, so the family is the most uh, uh, revered place for Blue Zone citizens who were living uh, more than 100 years. They were centenarians. So for all of us to increase the lifespan and longevity, uh, you know, this is, uh, the, the family is really, really important. And then, of course, downshift. Downshift is finding moments to decompress, you know, rest lena. You have to take a rest. You know, a lot of stress busters. You can do karaoke singing or you can do a uh, kind of, a, you know, watch a comedy show or you can do meditation or you can do probably go to a, you know, a, a musical night or something that relaxes you or simply do, you know, meditation or, you know, puja part karna, getting into religious activities, spiritual activities. So everything where you actually give yourself your time and then, you know, de-stress yourself. Aaj hum log digital uh, detoxification ki baat kar rahe ki on no WhatsApp, no Instagram for two days, three days or a week. But okay, that's that's a good beginning. But then we can do this on a day-to-day -day basis. So next, of course, there is wine at five. So uh, now this is again region-centric. So this is uh, this was done in uh, uh, in Italy, Sardinia, uh, you know, region. Mein. Does not mean that, you know, we need to be consuming this. Uh, for, for us in India, you know, of course, uh, we are not, a wine drinking country per se, of course, uh, data might reveal something different. Uh, but I think more or less our complexion is not wine drinking country. So we can probably take a lot of other, uh, you know, concoctions in, uh, in Ayurveda, kuch kada pi sakte hai, kashaya hai, humare bosar aur herbal cheeze hai, or simply drink something which is non-caffeine, non-toxic and nutritious. You know, there are so many things, you know, we can have buttermilk and so many things, but on a regular basis, on a daily basis almost, and making a part of it on a long-term basis. And next is, the last one is, your sense of belongingness. Belongingness means finding a faith-based community. Faith-based community need not be a religious community alone. They can spirituality community. For example, in India, I can talk about ISKCON. I think they're doing an amazing job. Apart from the spirituality and uh, Krishna consciousness, they're also recommending, I mean, they're doing a lot of social work in terms of uh, medical in terms of so many other things. You know, art of living is it's giving uh, so many things. Patanjali, for that matter, popularized yoga and so many contributions. So, uh, you know, uh, Brahma Kumaris. So, there are so many uh, uh, platforms where we can contribute. I mean, this could be uh, having a connotation of some religious or spirituality, but there are so many other social organizations, you know, uh, fighting for the cause of women, fighting for the, uh, 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 you know, cause of, uh, you know, street children. There are so many old age homes which are going. So we need to engage ourselves with the, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, okay. So there's one uh, uh, sky. Okay. So I'll uh, look into your comment later. So so this is exactly what. So right now, so let's look at, make a summary of what the nine uh, power, nine, uh, you know, strategies of blue zone diets are. A is that move naturally. So you have to do a hai, physical activities. Karna hai. Two is purpose. Find out the ikigai. Downshift, relax, karna hai, uh, you know, stress buster. Karna hai. Then 80% rule is don't overeat. Uh, jagar rakho, 20% khali rakho so that your digestion, microbiome, gut microbiome is, is very healthy. And your, uh, your, your news, uh, uh, sorry, your, uh, you know, your uh, nutrition absorption is really uh, very, very robust. And then, uh, you know, consume food from uh, plant kingdom. Zyada karna hai. Does not mean that you should not be, uh, you know, consuming dairy uh, products also. You are non-vegetarian. You are free to do that. But the quantity and the frequency of that has to be less. And then consume a certain, uh, you know, uh, liquid uh, uh, juices or wellness drinks or kadas or something like that. I wouldn't recommend drinking wine. Of course, they say port wine. Uh, primarily because it gives you this resveratrol. But resveratrol can also be found in many other red-colored uh, fruits and uh, vegetables like beetroot or maybe red, uh, you know, grapes, black grapes. So all these things. So there are other alternative things. So that's our speciality at Velocity Genetics. We'll recommend those foods, uh, you know, when you take our services. And of course, right type, uh, the, the social community, community feeling. And then loud ones first, your family. And then of course, belonging. Belongingness is like, you know, your, your social contribution, your engagement with some or the other group. So friends, this is exactly what it is. So what you need to do is, uh, if you're talking about a blue zone diet, the food guidelines has to be on a monthly basis, you can have maybe, you know, uh, uh, the 
नॉन वेजिटेरियन फूड एक्सेट्रा सो ऑन मंथली बेसिस डोंट से दैट यू नो आई एम ईटिंग डेली और दिन में दो बार तीन बार खाता हूँ ठीक है महीने में एक बार दो बार खाता हूँ सो मंथली बेसिस सो यू और डू दिस रेड्यूस डेयरी प्रोडक्ट्स एज वेल बिकॉज दैट्स ऑल्सो रिकमेंडेशन बट ऑन अ वीकली बेसिस यू नीड टू स्लैश शुगर स्पेशली एडेड शुगर इज अ बिग यू नो अनदर पैंडमिक दैट माइट ट्रिगर अलॉट ऑफ डायबिटिक पेशेंट एंड सो मेनी अदर एलाइट डिसीजेस eliminate eggs uh, uh, you know it definitely is a source of proteins on a day to day basis but that come from animal kingdom and you can get a similar amount of protein that you require for your growth maintenance and uh, you know functioning of uh, all the organs at an optimum level also from the plant king plant kingdom so isko prefer kare and go easy on fish so you can eat fish doesn't mean if you are a non vegetarian of course you know if you are a vegetarian i'm not not recommending that you need to be eating this but you can reduce the quantity because you know you want to uh, uh, have some fun with your taste buds and unko satisfy karna theek hai you do it but the number of uh, uh, the servings per month have to be come coming down that could be at a weekly level but on a daily level of course 95 to 100% plant based uh, you know uh, uh, food habits or diet hum log follow karenge especially with you know whole grains and then beans and then uh, uh, drinking enough water good quality of water and uh, you know seeds and nuts and everything so we we give that in the diet plan when to our client so this is again a summary of power nine so i want you to really understand this uh, nine and these are the actually secrets of centenarians in the blue zone areas now all these uh, good things which they have practiced for years which are giving them uh, credible results are being adopted across the world but there is a twist the twist of course you know these are the uh, blue zone power nine so you know this is the same thing so now the question is i take another 10 minutes uh, a few minutes to you know you know uh, get to the subject now the other part of this uh, subject is uh, we understood what is uh, the blue zones and what are the blue zone diets what are their preferences what are the best practices that they had so in the world till now they have identified five blue zones but surprise surprise this is singapore singapore is now considered the sixth blue zone and it is actually not a natural blue zone but it is actually a manufactured blue zone the reason because uh, the reason why it's called a manufactured blue zone is because the government there has constructed the infrastructure of that country in such a way that people don't take uh, you know vehicles for short distances they'll have to walk they have no route there where the two wheelers four wheelers go they'll have to walk and of course i've, I've been to singapore and then i've seen people walking and they are like you know quite fit so you know this is the fifth uh, sorry sixth blue zone in the making or it's already there and the life expectancy there has drastically increased in the last few years ab sawal ye hai ki where do we go and settle the five blue zones or we all migrate to singapore and waha hum log karenge so that you know we we'll live longer well it's not really practically possible people are not moving from gaza where there is there are rockets uh, you know bombing and uh, happening because people are traditionally accustomed to stay in that particular place uh, traditionally historically for various reasons now unless and until you are you are working some different countries and you are you are settled for example many people from US, uh, india will go to us or you know canada a lot of european countries it's fine but by going and settling in that country is doesn't change your genetic information your genes still are indians uh, your, your genetic information is still the same so you definitely will have to to pay extra attention to your epigenetics because you're now dealing with one more uh, you know a, a kind of an obstacle that is change environment and it may not really suit to everybody so coming to what i said earlier is that you know how long you know life span ki baat kar rahe hain hum log longevity ki baat kar rahe hain and you know how we can live longer so what really is the word aging a lot of people now started saying that it's not anti aging you know anti aging is become becomes like you know it's a little outdated concept it's it's actually called healthy aging ki bhai age to hona hi hai but then you'll have to age gracefully without really having a lot of bumps uh, on the way so aging is what it's a lifelong accumulation of damage to the tissues cells and molecules of the body that occurs as an intrinsic side effect of the body's normal operation though abhi matlab any gadget uh, will also have a expiry date whether it's your mobile phone or two wheeler or four wheeler everything anything that works on some mechanics uh, you know under the physics law will have some expiry date it will not work 
uh, the technology will get updated. As far as human beings are concerned, the body can also innate ability hey, uski, to tolerate some damage, but too much of it causes disease and disability. So body cannot sustain uh, so much of a damage. And that's the reason a lot of people today uh, at the age of uh, you know 45, they look like 60. I was attending a growth summit uh, in, in uh, Mumbai and a person sitting next to me, I thought probably must be 60, 65. And then he said that I'm 47. And then we got engaged ourselves with some genetics related talk. And uh, he decided to do his genetic testing as well. So now question is, what do we do? Blue zone, humko pata hai, theory pata hai ki yahan ye ye ho hai. these are the best practices. So what should I be practicing? What's, what's my diet? And that's where uh, Velocity Genetics says, crack your genetic code because in your lifespan and longevity, 20% genetic impact also is there. It could be more in some areas, but on an average, I'm saying 20% should be your genetic mapping, genetic risk factors. Based on that, your epigenetic uh, choices have to be very, very specific because you are not me. I am not you. We are all individuals. We are all unique. Our thumbnail, if not match, it's not Corona ki zaidat property, you know, any, you know, uh, uh, affidavit I can, uh, you know, accept or my, my, my thumbnail de sakta ho. So that means I'm sure that I'm, 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 I'm unique. It cannot be copied by anybody else. So here is an opportunity for all of us to know our body well and take control of our health. Just imagine you buy a new BMW or a Jaguar or a Mercedes and your speedometer says that, you know, you have 240 kilometers per hour speed mein chala sakte ho. I mean, in India, I don't think there is any highway or even a runway of an you know, airport where you can actually drive at that speed. I don't really know why they have that kind of uh, uh, speedometers. I think, you know, if there are so many signboards on the highway saying you can't drive beyond 60 or 80 or 100, I think our uh, car makers are insane to actually give us 240 speed because increasing the speed of a car doesn't take much of a effort. It's just that you need to press the accelerator and the you know, car zooms in 240, uh, sorry, 140, 160, 180. But the question is that, are you able to control the speed? Do you have the infrastructure? You know, so much of a traffic and then you'll bang people. And then we saw yesterday uh, a Delhi bus banged into so many people. And, you know, so many accidents are that are happening by speeding. Speeding is not the wise thing. Controlling the vehicle is the wisest thing. So that's the, that's the reason a genetic testing actually helps us as to what are the things that we need to control. Because we can go and then build muscles, but then at the end, we'll feel that, you know, that's only one aspect of our physical fitness. There are so many other things that we are missing. So if you do a genetic testing and genetic sequencing, and that technology is now available, and if you're able to increase your lifespan, your longevity by five years, by 10 years, by 15 years, tell me how much you are willing to pay. Now, that question may be very irrelevant right now. Abhi hum log ye puchenge, it looks like, oh, it's a commercial, you know, tone. But just imagine a person who is, you know, almost in the ICU and in the deathbed and then is certain to lose his life. And suddenly there's somebody who says, okay, look, I've got a magic pill. I've got a solution that you can live another next 10 years. How much that patient will be able to pay? I'm sure even the poorest person will pay a considerable amount of money because life is only once. And life is precious. So that's the reason taking clues from the blue zone. I want to tell you that, you know, it's actually, uh, there are so many books that are written. So the epigenetics or the lifestyle uh, choices that we all make are absolutely important. Look at the book, which says human epigenetics, how science works. And interestingly, you'll get this book also by uh, Judith, who says, you are what your grandparents ate. genetics. Aapke father ko, mother ko gaye hai, and then we are there and we are passing on. So it's a genetic thing. So what they ate actually is having an impact on us as well. So today we are talking about not this diet or that diet. I'm talking about only one diet. That is your gene-based personalized diet, which is unique. So how many types of you, you know, diets we can create? We can create 800 crores different diets for every individual. Of course, 90, 95% could be the same. But that subtle difference of 1% or 2% is what creates the magic. And how do we create that? Well, we can create through a genetic mapping, DNA sequencing. So, of course, this science is a relatively new. People are still into that race of saying that 
ठीक है यू नो सर दर्द भी हो रहा है तो यू नो सुपर स्पेशलिस्ट को देखेंगे will pop up you know all kinds of pills and capsules and tablets and then we feel good so that's a instant uh, relief and then you know you are you're good to go you you you're good to travel take a flight go to office do all kinds of work you know dance in the garba or maybe in a marriage or a birthday party you know you're fine but what happens is that we cut down the number of years in our longevity so uh, so the genetic science says that in spite of there is a theory saying that the longevity your life span is stagnated here the genetics is saying that it's possible that people can live up to 500 years people can live up to 1000 years and who is saying this well you won't believe me but then google is saying this i mean of course google is now diversified into uh, you know electric cars and you know driverless cars and so many other technological advancements so google says humans could live for 500 years and it's already investing in firms hoping to extend our lives five fold so it's not about shatayu nahi hai it's not 100 or centenaries anymore Uh, we will be probably living 500 years and it's going to happen in the next 10 15 20 years so stay tuned if you're lucky probably i think we can benefit so this is obrey de gray who say is a scientist who says humans can live for 1000 years and there's a lot of research going on and they're finding out as to why the body is aging and if you are treating aging as a disease and then finding solutions of course your body should not be aging and you should be fit enough so this is craig venter craig venter is the first person who was sequenced completely after the human genome project in 2003 in the usa and uh, his uh, project longevity uh, human longevity raises more than 220 million so there's a lot of investment credible companies are doing in this research of enhancing the longevity etc so friends what we as a bottom line what we need to understand is that we need to understand ourselves scientifically not here say ki bhai ye khao ye hoga tulsi le lo ye hoga ashwagandha le lo ye hoga these are all good but they are all random suggestions you can't you can't have the patience or i don't have that kind of a time frame where you can do a lot of trial and error methods and then finally say that oh this is not working for me and that's not working for me you can't be relying on a hearsay you need to rely on science rely on rely on the research so what really matters to have longevity also is immunity and we have understood the importance of that during covid 19 people uh, uh, could survive if the immunity was strong and people irrespective of their their economic strength could not survive if the immunity was not strong so it's very very important so just to tell you for the people who are listening to this kind of a webinar from velocity genetics for the first time we are velocity genetics we are the pioneers and market leaders in nutrigenomics in india uh, what we do is predictive genetic sequencing and we also have an institute called velocity institute of genomics uh, nutrition and entrepreneurship training so you have an opportunity to understand uh, the 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 world of genetics the world of nutrition and also you know genomic wellness as to how it's becoming more and more relevant so our institute gives a two month course online and interactive we just finished one batch i'm sure some of the students are here attending this uh, webinar so it's a two months online and interactive certificate course in nutrigenomics and once you complete this you become a certified genomic wellness consultant the next batch will tell you and then we also do genetic testing where we will check our clients for more than 300 different parameters 300 genetic testing and uh, we we give them a personalized report and give the genetic risk factors as to where they are they have mutations and you know we we map that uh, across gsa for more than uh, you know uh, 6.5 million uh, mutations and then from there the bioinformatics team will create that uh, uh, that personalized report which runs into thousands of pages so you'll get a username password and then you can access your genetic data and then you will get a personalized gene based diet plan which is as good as a blue zone diet plan because you can't go to this five places and settle down there neither to singapore but yes wherever we are you know whether i'm from faridabad or from tamil nadu madurai or from pune satara sangli it doesn't matter we can we can get the benefit of blue zone diet provided we do genetic sequencing so this is what we do so this is our management apart from me uh, as a cmd of the company we have mr milind doshi as a chief technology officer we also have a lot of uh, genetic experts and officers uh, and then we also have our genetic counselors who will actually interpret your report and then explain to you in a very layman language as to what we really do and then we also have medical advisory board and then i want to tell you that next thursday we are going to have a webinar with dr nikhil baljekar and we are going to extend this topic and then talk about longevity so we are today we are talking predominantly about blue zone diet and then the practices we look at 
what is longevity to do with genetics. So we're going to talk about, we're going to have a discussion with Dr. Nikhil Baljekar, who's doing a lot of studies on longevity. And we have some very interesting things coming up in the future as well. So uh, to end, I want each and every one of you who attend this webinar, it's a free webinar, it's a education awareness creating webinar because that is my one of my ikigai. You know, it gives me a lot of satisfaction, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, it, it, it serves my purpose of contribution. So yeah, of course, we take a lot of time doing the research and, and understanding the subject, but it's a revolutionary scientific technology. I want you to adopt to this and then go beyond hearsay and then gossip and then go and dig the science and then apply on yourself. Because, you know, Dr. Sinclair, who was speaking, uh, he himself is applying what he's prophesizing uh, on himself. So that's why, you know, he's quite aged. Uh, he's 50 plus, but looks a young man. So, friends, at the end of the day, we can do a lot of things. You know, I, I can, uh, you know, I can get uh, most expensive cars and everything. But if uh, we don't really take care of our body, then it's of no use. So we need to take care of our body, ex expand our longevity, uh, expand our lifespan, and then contribute to the society at large. So uh, for people who are interested in associating with us, there's also an entrepreneurship uh, opportunity. You could join hands with us and uh, we can all start together a genetic revolution in India. So please take action. Thank you very much. So with this, I come to the end of this webinar. So thank you so much. I'm sure I think we have added a little value. So uh, thanks so much. Thank you, Dr. Girish. Thank you, Sky. Sunil Kumar Yadav. Okay. And uh, Dr. Nawal Anandia, thank you so much. Dr. Arora, uh, you had a lot of things to share, of course, but it was a private chat. So he's saying uh, reasons of longevity is blue zones are different. Uh, many, many different. Yeah, of course, these are also the things that there is no industry. Yes. No chemical pollutions, no plastic burning, no water intoxication. Food habits are different. And so many, many other reasons. It's not just the reasons that I told you, but there are so many other reasons as well. So thank you so much, Dr. HSR Arora. We intend to do a webinar with him as well when uh, the time allows. And uh, yeah, chemical intoxication. So, you know, that, that fundamentally we are covering in the nutrition and diet that we are talking about. So the Blue Zone diet only talks about plant-based diet and all the other things that we have mentioned. So particularly, we can get into details later. But fundamentally, it's a plant-based diet. So what we're eating today is a lot of processed food with a lot of so many preservatives. And if you really look at the label, I think we'll be horrified with what really we are consuming. So it's been uh, uh, a pleasure to have all of you here in this webinar. So uh, with this, we come to the end. So we will... Uh, uh, we will uh, uh, we'll see you next uh, week, Thursday for another uh, webinar with, uh, uh, you know, uh, similar topics. So thank you very much. Goodbye and goodbye.